What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to our Mount Made webinar series featuring Mount alums right here from the College of Mount St. Vincent. My name is Andrew Creel, and I am Associate Director for Admission here at the College of Mount St. Vincent. And I am welcome with a new co-host as well as a new guest. And Nicole, if you could, please welcome yourself and then followed by you, Michelle. Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Quaranto, and I am the Assistant Director for Alumni Relations and Giving here at the Mount. And I am so excited to be here with you all today. And I'm Michelle Ross. I'm a reporter at News 12 The Bronx and a graduate of Mount St. Vincent in 2014. Awesome. And now with that, Michelle, just to get started, we want to hear more about your Mount Me journey, how you found out about Mount St. Vincent, what you did at Mount St. Vincent, eventually your career as well. So to get started, for you, how did you find out about CMSB? So in high school, I, I played basketball. I grew up playing basketball and I wanted to go all the way to the WNBA. So obviously before that, I had to start playing basketball in college and get recruited that way. So throughout high school, I played basketball on a travel team. I played year round, you know, trying to really get my name out there. And so I had an injury sophomore year in 10th grade that kind of sidelined me for one season. And any hopes of going to a division one school were kind of crushed after that. So I started to reach out to division three schools, division two schools, but actually Mount St. Vincent reached out to me. The coach had came to one of my games. I had never heard of it. Just like, I'm sure you always yeah. get that when you tell people, when people ask, you know, what school do you go to? You say Mount, Mount St. Vincent and they have no idea. Even people who have lived in New York their whole lives have never even heard of it. So I, I ended up going to check out the school and I loved the campus. I went with my parents, loved everything about it. I did also have an opportunity to play at City College, CUNY. And, you know, at the time I, I just didn't like how there was no campus, you know, it was just buildings, you know, it was in Manhattan. Um, although it, it was convenient being in Manhattan, you know, I'd be able to be much closer to my internships and things like that. But I just loved the feeling of being on an actual college campus. So I did end up, you know, playing for basketball team, not for long, because I did want to put more of my time and effort into, you know, what I do now. It did take up a lot of time, although I do wish I kind of stuck through it throughout the whole thing, because, you know, the sports teams, you know, that camaraderie and everything like that. And you know, every time I would see either the girls, the basketball team and like the other teams and the soccer, lacrosse, you know, they all had that camaraderie that I kind of missed. So that's how I heard of the school. Awesome. I had no idea that you, that you were a basketball player in, in a sense. Yeah, that's awesome yeah. to hear. So you mentioned how you took more time and focus on your studies while you were here at the College of Mount St. Vincent. What major were you and what were your classes like your first couple of years here at Mount St. Vincent? So my first major, I, I wanted to go into sports management because I realized quickly that, you know, I wasn't going to go to the WNBA. <laughs> so I still wanted to be um, in sports. And, I, and, you know, we didn't really have that there at Mount St. Vincent. So my first major was business. Um, so I thought maybe I can kind of, you know, weave my way around that. I had actually met some girls, some juniors that were communication majors, and they actually, one of them was in the same position that I was in. She was recruited to play and she played freshman year, but then she she left also and decided to take the communication route. So it was it was like meant to be that I met these two girls because they kind of, you know, encouraged me to hop on board with communication, that they love their classes, everything like that. So I think it was after the first semester. So I didn't really take any business classes yet. It was really just the prerequisites that are required for all freshmen. So I hadn't really dipped my toes into the communication field just yet, but the way she was explaining it, I really enjoyed it. Awesome, thank you for that. And in those communication classes, were there any communication classes that stuck out to you that you were like, all right, like this makes so much sense to me and also any professors that stick out from your Mount experience? The first class that I think really stuck out to me was Professor Myers. She Is she still there? Professor Myers? Yeah, she is. Okay, so the first one that I took, field production, I think it was called, and I was able, and it's actually, it reflects and it helped me do what I do now. We were assigned each a camera and a tripod, you know, all this equipment. We had to go out, shoot stories on campus and or shoot scenes on campus, or even not, not on campus. You know, our final project was to, it was really, you know, go out there and get some experience. And then we were each assigned a computer that had all the editing programs that we were able to you know, put everything together. So it really, you know, made me feel like I was at a big school. And, and that's what I do now as a, as a multimedia reporter, journalist at News 12 the Bronx, the reporters go out and film their own stories. And then we come back and we edit everything, you know, we write it ourselves. So that really prepared me for that. So it was really great that that one class was available to us. And one teacher that really sticks out to me is Dr. Fitzgerald. He really saw the potential in me from the very beginning. He always, you know, encouraged me to go on and 
you know, really go out and get, you know, a, a job in this field. And if I ever questioned myself, I know that he was there, you know, supporting me because of his background and his, his words of encouragement. That's awesome to hear just even from our sense, Nicole and I being alums as well, just hearing how professors have always been like transformative in our experiences here as students. Now for you, having that experience in the classroom was very important. Did you have any experiences outside of classrooms, clubs, student government, anything like that? Yeah, so one club that I was part of was Mount Media. And I luckily had Bradjalyn. She was the president of Mount Media and she was really into the directing and she knew that I wanted to be on air. So we created my own show on campus that aired. I forgot what channel it was on. If you tuned into the channel in the dorm rooms, it would come up. So what was the, you know, name of the, show? the lifestyle. So yeah, and it, you know, it was funny, like I wanted to do more newsy things, but I was kind of getting my feet wet. So I would interview someone on campus once a week, you know, getting to know their life and, and things like that, what it's like on campus, how they got here, things of that nature. So yeah, it aired once a week and it really, you know, gave me that exposure and gave me that experience before going to do what I do now. I did want to get involved in student government. I ran freshman year for president and I, they, they told me I lost by like a handful of votes. So, but it kind of worked out because I, I really got involved with many other things that helped me throughout my career. Internships were a big deal. You know, I highly encourage everyone to do that. And I think it's, it was required for us. You know, it was a credit for us to go and to do one internship. I did a second one. So where I interned was the Bill Cunningham show and also the Rachel Ray show. So they were good experiences, but it taught me that I didn't want to go into that type of television. And I was doing mostly production. I really wanted to be, you know, in Rachel Ray's spot. You know, I wanted to be the one delivering whatever it was. So, you know, new, it made me realize even further that I want to be involved in news. So even if you're stuck in an internship that you don't like, and you're going to think, you know, this isn't taking me where I want to be, it, it might actually take you there. You know, it's going to help you realize, okay, this is what I don't want to do. And this is what I'm going to pursue instead. All right, great. So thank you so much for sharing some of those previous internship positions that you held. Now, what's your current employment position? Right now I'm at News 12 The Bronx, which is great, you know, because Mount St. Vincent is right in the Bronx. And I'm a multimedia journalist, just means that I, I'm a TV reporter, TV news reporter, but I go out with my own equipment that's provided to me from the station. And I have a tripod, a camera. I shoot the whole story myself. I, you know, I set up the tripod and I have a mic and everything. I interview the people and then, you know, I break down all my equipment. I come back and I edit it myself. So multimedia journalist. Awesome. That sounds like a whole lot of fun and a lot of responsibility. So you gave us a little bit of a snippet of what you do as a multimedia journalist, but can you kind of outline what a typical day at work looks like for you? No day is the same, although the outline is pretty much similar day to day. I get in at around 1.30 in the afternoon. I'm the night side reporter. We, we have our, our afternoon meeting where we figure out what I cover for the day. Uh, I'll pro most likely do something for the five o'clock show, seven o'clock show, the eight o'clock show, and the 10 o'clock show. I'll go out once I get my assignment, do the interviews that I need to do. And then uh, sometimes I have a laptop so I can edit out in the field. Other times, luckily, since the Bronx isn't so big, I can come back to the station and just edit everything there. But sometimes, or I should say many times, uh, because of breaking news, I get pulled off my original story and then have to meet a camera guy, camera woman uh, at the location. And then we just go up live with sometimes minutes to spare. So I would say it feels like even sometimes a little over 50% of the time that I'm getting pulled off my original story and having to go to breaking news, especially because the nature of my shift is at night and things tend to happen at night. Great. So kind of looking back at your career and the time that you've spent at News 12 over the past few years, can you describe a little bit to me about how it feels to be in front of the camera? You know, do you still get nervous at all or have those butterflies kind of passed at this point? Yeah, I pretty much get nervous every single time whenever I'm live. There are times when I'm not live and that's when I'm by myself, you know, filming myself in front of the camera speaking. But what helps is that, you know, when I'm going live and, you know, in front of the camera, it's not in front of a huge crowd. You know what I mean? It's just me and the camera. So that kind of helps a little bit. You know, I try to envision, you know, my audience, you know, who is the story impacting? You know, what do I want them to know? So I kind of envision that one person, but I, I, I still do get nervous and I, I feel like it'll be, you know, years from now when I don't get nervous. But also if the, if the nerves aren't there, then I feel like the passion isn't there anymore either. So it's okay to be nervous. For sure. Absolutely. Without a doubt. So thinking back to the time that you spent at Mount St. Vincent, I know earlier you described to us a little bit about that video production class that you took with Dr. Myers. How did you transfer the skills that you learned in the classroom at Mount St. Vincent to the studio at News 12? Yeah, so, you know, it was great. The cameras were very similar, I remember specifically. So there wasn't much of a trial and error period, especially because I worked my first on-air job four hours north of the city, upstate New York in Elmira. News 12 is, is my second on-air job. And that's typically what people have to do in this industry. They have to relocate to a smaller market first, and then 
uh, get some experience there before coming back to a bigger market. So it pretty much was an easy transition. If anything, it was just, you know, figuring out the settings are a little different on this camera than the other one. So I was well prepared coming to News 12 from the College of Mount St. Vincent. That is so great to hear. And we're so excited that you had such a fantastic Mount experience that you were able to transfer into your career and really help you launch that amazing journalist career. Thinking about all those classes that you took as a communication major and all the experience that you had also in your internships, do you believe that the Mount truly helped you launch your career? And if yes, how so? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I really owe it to the teachers that I had throughout my career there that really tried hard to get the resources that a small school may not always get because they want you to succeed. And I truly felt that even though it's a small school, the teachers are still there. They have the experience. They're there to help you. And, you know, that class specifically that I mentioned before, I don't know what I would have done if it wasn't for that class, because with my industry now it's consolidating and that's what they're looking for, for people to operate their own equipment. So it's good that the teachers we have at Mount St. Vincent are, you know, up to date on, on certain industries, you know, whether it's, it's communication or it's business or it's something else. It's great that we still have that exposure and that experience when it comes to Mount St. Vincent. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree with you more. So one of the final questions that I have for you is I know that you've kind of mentioned some of those dedicated faculty members and maybe even some friends and mentors. Do you keep in touch with anyone from your days at Mount St. Vincent? Every once in a while, I do email Dr. Fitzgerald to let him know that, hey, I just got a new job, wanted to let you know. Of course, he's super happy for me all the time. He, he was hoping to, you know, hopefully see me on TV in the Bronx. I think he lives in New Jersey. So I think, you know, there's News 12 New Jersey out there. But every once in a while, you know, my stuff does air on News 12 New Jersey. But yeah, I think, I, so I've had four jobs now. This is my fourth job out of college. And every time I've let him know that, hey, I just got a new job and thank you so much. You still keep on to those relationships with teachers that you've developed. And I am also friends on Facebook with Dr. Crownover as well. So, you know, I'm sure he sees my posts every once in a while whenever I get a new gig or, or a story I, I post on Facebook too. So in all, Michelle, wrapping up this interview now, I want to know from you, what would be your words or advice to our incoming class? And this is the class of 2025 that will be starting this fall, 2021. Coming from Great Neck South High School, going to Mount St. Vincent, doing your internships, participating in classes, to now your career in New 12, the Bronx. Words or advice to that class? Right. So everyone's experience is going to be a little different. The great thing about Mount St. Vincent is that, you know, people come from all backgrounds to the school. So you're going to be exposed to many different people. And so, so like I said, everyone's experience is going to be a little different. For me, coming from Great Neck South, a lot of the people that I graduated with in high school went on to much bigger schools. So for me, going to a smaller school, it, it made me feel like, in a way, almost like, oh, I may not get as good of education as my, you know, high school peers. There may be times when you do think that, but never never underestimate the College of Mount St. Vincent because I was able to take on four, four jobs now out of college, all related to news after that. So it almost works to your benefit, you know, having a smaller school. The teachers will pay more attention to you. There's more of that, you know, hands-on learning. And, you know, don't let that discourage you. It's okay that it's a small school. You know, the education that I'm getting is is just as good as, as a bigger school. Thank you so much, Michelle, for those words of advice, especially to our incoming class, the class of 2025. Um, if you want to follow more with Michelle and with alumni relations and admissions, everything will be in the description down below. If you're watching on Instagram, you can follow along with ourselves admissions along with the Mount St. Vincent main account. And Michelle, if you can, please let everyone know your social media handles to stay in contact with you as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You could definitely follow my news updates on Twitter. That's the most newsy social media platform. So that's at M Ross News. And then for the other platforms, it'll be in the description box. Great. And I just wanted to say again, thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us as a member of the class of 2014. It's great to have you back and still connected with your alma mater. This is a shout out to any other alums we might have out there. If you are Mount Made and you want to tell us a little bit about how the Mount helps launch your career, feel free to reach out to us. Again, as Drew said, all the description will be in the box below and you'll be able to reach out to us either via email or on our social media. Thank you everyone for watching this Mount Maid interview featuring Miss Michelle Ross. Thank you everyone. Bye.